Henry Gwynne Jeffries Mosley was an English physicist. Mosley's contribution to the science of physics was the justification from physical laws of the previous empirical and chemical concept of the atomic number. This stemmed from his development of Mosley's law in X-ray spectra. Mosley's law justified many concepts in chemistry by sorting the chemical elements of the periodic table of the elements in a logical order based on their physics. Mosley's law advanced atomic physics by providing the first experimental evidence in favor of Niels Bohr's theory. Aside from the hydrogen atom spectrum which the Bohr theory was designed to reproduce, that theory refined Ernest Rutherford's and Antonius van den Broek's model, which proposed that the atom contains in its nucleus a number of positive nuclear charges that is equal to its number in the periodic table. This remains the accepted model today. When World War I broke out in Western Europe, Mosley left his research work at the University of Oxford behind to volunteer for the Royal Engineers of the British Army. Mosley was assigned to the force of British Empire soldiers that invaded the region of Gallipoli, Turkey, in April 1915. As a telecommunications officer, Mosley was shot and killed during the Battle of Gallipoli on 10 August 1915, at the age of 27. Experts have speculated that Mosley could have been awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1916, had he not been killed. As a consequence, the British government instituted new policies for eligibility for combat duty. Biography Henry G. J. Mosley, known to his friends as Harry, was born in Weymouth in Dorset in 1887. His father Henry Nottage Mosley, who died when Henry Mosley was quite young, was a biologist and also a professor of anatomy and physiology at the University of Oxford, who had been a member of the Challenger expedition. Mosley's mother was Annabel Gwynne Jeffries Mosley, the daughter of the Welsh biologist and conchologist John Gwynne Jeffries. Henry Mosley had been a very promising schoolboy at Summerfield School, and he was awarded a King's Scholarship to attend Eton College. In 1906 he won the Chemistry and Physics Prizes at Eton. In 1906 Mosley entered Trinity College of the University of Oxford, where he earned his bachelor's degree. Immediately after graduation from Oxford in 1910, Mosley became a demonstrator in physics at the University of Manchester under the supervision of Sir Ernest Rutherford. During Mosley's first year at Manchester, he had a teaching load as a graduate teaching assistant, but following that first year, he was reassigned from his teaching duties to work as a graduate research assistant. He declined a fellowship offered by Rutherford, preferring to move back to Oxford, in November 1913, where he was given laboratory facilities but no support. Contribution to Physics and Chemistry Experimenting with the energy of beta particles in 1912 Mosley showed that high potentials were attainable from a radioactive source of radium, thereby inventing the first atomic battery, though he was unable to produce the 1 MeV necessary to stop the particles. This was a pioneering use of the method of X-ray spectroscopy in physics, using Bragg's diffraction law to determine the X-ray wavelengths. Mosley discovered a systematic mathematical relationship between the wavelengths of the X-rays produced and the atomic numbers of the metals that were used as the targets in X-ray tubes. This has become known as Mosley's Law. Before Mosley's discovery, the atomic numbers of an element had been thought of as a semi-arbitrary sequential number, based on the sequence of atomic masses, but modified somewhat where chemists found this modification to be desirable, such as by the Russian chemist. Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev, in his invention of the periodic table of the elements, Mendeleev had interchanged the orders of a few pairs of elements in order to put them in more appropriate places in this table of the elements. For example, the metals cobalt and nickel had been assigned the atomic numbers chapter 27 and 28, respectively, based on their known chemical and physical properties, even though they have nearly the same atomic masses. 
In fact, the atomic mass of cobalt is slightly larger than that of nickel, which would have placed him in backwards order if they had been placed in the periodic table blindly according to atomic mass. Mosley's experiments in X-ray spectroscopy showed directly from their physics that cobalt and nickel have the different atomic numbers, 27 and 28, and that they are placed in the periodic table correctly by Mosley's objective measurements of their atomic numbers. Hence, Mosley's discovery demonstrated that the atomic numbers of elements are not just rather arbitrary numbers based on chemistry and the intuition of chemists but rather, they have a firm experimental basis from the physics of their X-ray spectra. In addition, Mosley showed that there were gaps in the atomic number sequence at numbers chapter 43, 61, 72, and 75. These spaces are now known, respectively, to be the places of the radioactive synthetic elements technetium and promethium and also the last two quite rare naturally occurring stable elements hafnium and rhenium. Nothing about these four elements was known of in Mosley's lifetime, not even their very existence. Based on the intuition of a very experienced chemist, Dmitry Mendeleev had predicted the existence of a missing element in the periodic table, which was later found to be filled by technetium, and Bohuslav Brauner had predicted the existence of another missing element in this table, which was later found to be filled by promethium. Henry Mosley's experiments confirmed these predictions by showing exactly what the missing atomic numbers were, 43 and 61. In addition, Mosley predicted the two more undiscovered elements, those were the atomic numbers chapter 72 and 75, and gave very strong evidence that there were no other gaps in the periodic table between the elements aluminium and gold. This latter question about the possibility of more undiscovered elements had been a standing problem among the chemists of the world, particularly given the existence of the large family of the lanthanide series of rare earth elements. Mosley was able to demonstrate that these lanthanide elements, i.e., lanthanum through lutetium, must have exactly 15 members, no more and no less. The number of elements in the lanthanides had been a question that was very far from being settled by the chemists of the early 20th century. They could not yet produce pure samples of all the rare earth elements, even in the form of their salts, and in some cases they were unable to distinguish between mixtures of two very similar rare earth elements from the nearby pure metals in the periodic table. For example, there was a so-called element that was even given the chemical name of didymium. Didymium was found some years later to be simply a mixture of two genuine rare earth elements, and these were given the names neodymium and praseodymium, meaning new twin and green twin. Also, the method of separating the rare earth elements by the method of ion exchange had not been invented yet in Mosley's time. Mosley's method in early X-ray spectroscopy was able to sort out the above chemical problems promptly, some of which had occupied chemists for a number of years. Mosley also predicted the existence of element 61, a lanthanide whose existence was previously unsuspected. Quite a few years later, this element 61 was created artificially in nuclear reactors and was named Promethium. Death and Aftermath Sometime in the first half of 1914, Mosley resigned from his position at Manchester, with plans to return to Oxford and continue his physics research there. His family and friends tried to persuade him not to join, but he thought it his duty. Mosley served as a technical officer in communications during the Battle of Gallipoli, in Turkey, beginning in April 1915, where he was killed in action on 10 August 1915. Mosley was shot in the head by a Turkish sniper while in the act of telephoning a military order, on as Isaac Asimov wrote. In view of what he, Mosley, might still have accomplished, his death might well have been the most costly single death of the war to mankind. Generally, because of Mosley's death in World War I, and after much lobbying by Ernest Rutherford, 
the British government instituted a policy of no longer allowing its prominent and promising scientists to enlist for combat duty in the armed forces of the Crown. Isaac Asimov also speculated that, in the event that he had not been killed while in the service of the British Empire, Mosley might very well have been awarded the 1916 Nobel Prize in Physics, which, along with the Prize for Chemistry, was not awarded to anyone that year. Additional credence is given to this idea by noting the recipients of the Nobel Prize in Physics in the two preceding years, 1914 and 1915, and in the following year, 1917. In 1914, Max von Lauer of Germany won the Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery of the diffraction of X-rays by crystals which was a crucial step towards the invention of X-ray spectroscopy. Then, in 1915, William Henry Bragg and William Lawrence Bragg, a British father-son pair, shared this Nobel Prize for their discoveries in the reverse problem, determining the structure of crystals using X-rays. Next, Mosley used the diffraction of X-rays by known crystals in measuring the X-ray spectra of metals. This was the first use of X-ray spectroscopy and also one more step towards creation of X-ray crystallography. In addition, Mosley's methods and analyses substantially supported the concept of atomic number, placing it on a firm, physics-based foundation. Moreover, Charles Barkler of Great Britain was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1917 for his experimental work in using X-ray spectroscopy in discovering the characteristic X-ray frequencies emitted by the various elements, especially the metals. Siegbahn, who carried on Mosley's work, received one, the 1924 Nobel Prize in Physics. Mosley's discoveries were thus of the same scope as those of his peers, and in addition, Mosley made the larger step of demonstrating the actual foundation of atomic numbers. Ernest Rutherford commented that Mosley's work allowed him to complete during two years at the outset of his career a set of researches that would surely have brought him a Nobel Prize. Only 27 years old at the time of his death, Mosley could, in the opinion of some scientists, have contributed much to the knowledge of atomic structure had he survived. As Niels Bohr said in 1962, you see actually the Rutherford work, the nuclear atom, was not taken seriously. We cannot understand today, but it was not taken seriously at all. There was no mention of it any place. The great change came from Mosley, memorial plaques to Mosley were installed at Manchester and Eton, and a Royal Society scholarship, established by his will, had as its second recipient the physicist P. M. S. Blackett, who later became president of the society. Mosley's contribution to understanding of the atom. Before Mosley and his law, atomic numbers had been thought of as a semi-arbitrary ordering number, vaguely increasing with atomic weight but not strictly defined by it. Mosley's discovery showed that atomic numbers were not arbitrarily assigned, but rather, they have a strong physical basis. Mosley redefined the idea of atomic numbers from its previous status as an ad hoc numerical tag to help sorting the elements, in particular in the periodic table, into a real and objective whole number quantity that was experimentally measurable. Furthermore, as noted by Bohr, Mosley's law provided a reasonably complete experimental set of data that supported the conception by Ernest Rutherford and Antonius van den Broek of the atom, with a positively charged nucleus surrounded by negatively charged electrons in which the atomic number is understood to be the exact physical number of positive charges in the central atomic nuclei of the elements. Mosley mentioned the two scientists above in his research paper, but he did not actually mention Bohr, who was rather new on the scene then. Simple modification of Rydberg's and Bohr's formulas were found to give theoretical justification for Mosley's empirically derived law for determining atomic numbers. The use of X-ray spectrometer X-ray spectrometers are the foundation stones of X-ray crystallography. The X-ray spectrometers as Mosley knew them worked as follows. 
A glass bulb electron tube was used, similar to that held by Mosley in the photo at the top of this article. Inside the evacuated tube, electrons were fired at a metallic substance, causing the ionization of electrons from the inner electron shells of the element. The rebound of electrons into these holes in the inner shells next causes the emission of X-rays photons that were led out of the tube in a semi-beam. Through an opening in the external X-ray shielding, these are next diffracted by a standardized salt crystal, with angular results read out as photographic lines by the exposure of an X-ray film fixed to the outside the vacuum tube at a known distance. Application of Bragg's law next allowed the wavelength of the emitted rays to be calculated. Mosley participated in the design and development of early X-ray spectrometry equipment learning some techniques from William Henry Bragg and William Lawrence Bragg at the University of Leeds, and developing others himself. Many of the techniques of X-ray spectroscopy were inspired by the methods that are used with visible light spectroscopes and spectrograms. By substituting crystals, ionization chambers, and photographic plates for their analogues in light spectroscopy, in some cases, Mosley found it necessary to modify his equipment to detect particularly soft lower frequency X-rays that could not penetrate either air or paper. By working with his instruments in a vacuum chamber, 